Hello children. Today we are going to read about the story The Black Aeroplane written by Frederick Forsyth. But before we read about the story, let's know something about the author. Frederick McCarthy Forsyth, born on 25th August 1938, is an English author, journalist, former spy and occasional political commentator. Before becoming a journalist, Forsyth completed his national service in the Royal Air Force as a pilot. His first full-length novel, The Day of the Jackal, was published in 1971. It became an international bestseller and gained him the Edgar Allan Poe Award for Best Novel. He is best known for thrillers such as The Dogs of War, The Odessa File and The Fourth Protocol. So now. Let's begin our story. It was night time when the sky was clear and the stars could be seen twinkling. Our narrator felt peace in being above a country that had fallen asleep while he was flying his old Dakota aeroplane over France to England. It was half past one in the morning and he was fantasizing about holidaying with his family. When the aeroplane was in France, he thought of informing the Paris control personnel for instructions. At that time, lights from the Paris city were blaring at him. He informed the control agency and they instructed him to turn 12 degrees towards the west. After receiving the instructions, the pilot geared up and followed them while putting the last fuel tank into operation. All this time, he was dreaming about his time with his family and then he started thinking about having a good, sumptuous, big English breakfast at the destination point. He was calm as everything was going as planned. On his way, he suddenly encountered storm clouds. By then, he had traveled 150 kilometers from Paris. They were so huge and dark that he compared them with black mountains. He knew he couldn't pass them as it was impossible to go above them or escape them with an amount of fuel that was left in the last tank. The right decision would have been to fly back to Paris safely. But the pilot's decision making was clouded by his wish to meet his family. He so desperately wanted to be with his family and have that English breakfast he had been dreaming of all day that he took the risk of not going back. Thus, he headed the plane right into the storm. It was so dark because of the storm that nothing was visible outside the plane. He started losing control of the airplane. The compass and other instruments had also stopped working because of the bad weather. He became helpless. Then, in the midst of nowhere, when everything failed, he saw a ray of hope when he noticed another airplane flying next to him. The pilot of the strange black aeroplane waved out to the narrator to follow him. The author followed him like an obedient child. He was also panicking because there was very less amount of fuel left. But following the pilot's signal, he safely reached the runway of an airport. When he turned to thank the other pilot, he realized that the plane that helped him had disappeared as soon as he came out of the storm. On landing, he headed straight into the control room to ask about the other pilot. To his utmost surprise, the lady there informed him that there was no other plane in the sky except his because of the bad weather. He is left astonished with a lot of questions unanswered in his mind. I am sure you are quite as puzzled about the identity of the strange pilot as our narrator is. Who do you think helped the narrator drive his plane to safety? Since it is a mysterious and an open-ended story, it leaves you with a lot of unsolved questions. It is very difficult to say about the unknown pilot who helped the narrator, but probably it was the narrator himself that helped him to overcome the fear in the storm as no other plane was seen in the radar except the narrator's Dakota plane in that fearsome situation. He might have been hallucinating. He was a good pilot and brave enough who helped himself land safely. The story, The Black Aeroplane, depicts vividly the mystery and suspense. It seems incredible sometimes to the scientific world. On the other hand, we can't deny the existence of such happenings. You must have met saviors 
who helped you out of a tricky situation. Think of the times when help seemed to arrive out of nowhere when you needed it. So the story teaches us that we should never give up. We should always try to help ourselves and never lose hope. We should take the risk and accept the challenge. The narrator was in a great trouble, but though he took on the risk, God extended a hand to help. So having faith in oneself is important to move forward in life. So always remember that we should never give up and never lose hope.